You know, they say he who seeks revenge should remember to dig two graves. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at 10 of the bloodiest acts of revenge in all of history. These bombs are now in production, and even more powerful farms are in development. For this list, we'll be looking at the most brutal acts inspired by vengeance from throughout time. Which of these do you find the most appalling? Let us know in the comments. The 47 Ronin. In 1701, feudal lord Asano Nagaroni was forced to commit seppuku after assaulting Kira Yoshinaka, a court official who had been goading and insulting him. Over the next two years, a group of Asano's samurai, made masterless or ronin by their leader's death, developed an elaborate plot to get revenge on Kira. In 1703, after thoroughly researching Kira's compound, the disparate ronin gathered and assaulted it, killing 19, including Kira when he refused seppuku, and injuring 22 more. <laughs> But the deaths didn't stop with Kira and his men, as all but one of the ronin took the honorable way out themselves after turning themselves in. To avenge one man, 65 people died. I grant you a samurai's death to be buried alongside your lord with honor. Peter the Heartbroken Heartbreaker Peter I of Portugal had a tragic rise to power, and it all centered on his love affair with Inez de Castro. De Castro was a lady-in-waiting, and Peter's father, Afonso, worried that if Peter married her, the land would be wrecked by civil war. Peter did marry her, so Afonso decided to have three assassins murder De Castro. Peter went to war with his father, and while he lost, Afonso died soon afterwards, and Peter ascended the throne anyway. He then had his wife's killers tracked down and reportedly executed two of them himself. How? By tearing their hearts out with his bare hands. You won't be needing this. Peter lived up to his monikers, the cruel and the just. Nahum's Plan B. In the wake of the Holocaust, many Jews were understandably furious and wanted revenge. A group of roughly 50 survivors formed an organization called Nahem, the Hebrew word for revenge. Their original goal was to perform a horrific eye for an eye by killing 6 million Germans indiscriminately by poisoning the water supply of Nuremberg. However, Plan A fell through when the man carrying the poison was arrested. Plan B was enacted, and Nachum attempted to poison captured SS prisoners' bread. Around 3,000 loaves were poisoned, though much fewer were seriously affected. According to one of the former members, around 400 prisoners died, though other reports suggested there were no deaths. Regardless of how many actually perished, the intended number was still incredible. Olga decimated the Drevlians. Olga was the wife of Igor, ruler of Kievan Rus, a federation in modern Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine. The Drevlians, a neighboring tribe, killed Igor after he demanded tribute from them. The Drevlians proposed that Olga marry his killer, Prince Mal. Despite pretending to accept the offer, Olga had the Drevlians' messengers and ambassadors buried or burned alive. When she went to pay tribute to her husband's grave, she had her men massacre the 5,000 drunken Drevlians who attended. Finally, her armies laid siege to the city where Igor died, Eskoristan, and used sulfur tied to birds from the city to burn it down. Did we mention she was later named a saint? Boudicca's Revolt Sometimes revenge can start a war. The Roman conquest of Britain was gradual, and one of its independent nominal allies was the Iceni tribe. Their leader, Prasitagus, hoped to maintain his people's freedom by leaving his lands to both Emperor Nero and his daughters. Far from honoring the late king, the Romans had Prasitagus' widow, Boudicca, beaten and her daughters assaulted. In vengeance for their mistreatment, Boudicca rallied the Iceni and other Celtic tribes in revolt against the Romans, destroying multiple Roman settlements and killing somewhere between 70 to 80,000 people. While Boudicca's forces were defeated, her revenge made its mark on history. You've got plenty of time to get into your Boudicca mode. I, a woman, hear me roar. Julius Caesar killed his pirate captors. Julius Caesar, one of the most famous men in history, was once kidnapped by pirates early in his career. Why this isn't more widely known is baffling. People are easy to search when they're dead. Lock him in the brig. 
Abducted while sailing the Aegean Sea, Caesar got along surprisingly well with the pirates, insisting they ask for more than double their original ransom price. On my head is disrespect. He supposedly joked that he'd raise an army and crucify them once he was freed. But after the ransom was paid, Caesar made good on his word, even if he gave them the small mercy of killing them before hanging them on crosses. What a nice guy. Saint Bartholomew's Day Massacre Religion can often be a motive for revenge, despite most preaching against it. By 1572, the French Protestant Huguenots had broken from the Catholic Church, and the country was in the midst of decades of civil war. Many prominent Huguenots were in Paris to attend the wedding of King Charles IX's sister Margaret, who had married a Protestant. At the prompting of the king's mother, Catherine de' Medici, Charles ordered prominent Huguenots in the city to be assassinated. <laughs> However, the violence soon spread, and thousands of Protestants of all ages were killed throughout Paris and the surrounding areas. The total number of dead is said to be anywhere from 5 to 70,000 throughout France. The Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings On December 7, 1941, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor in Hawaii in a surprise military attack on the United States. Four years later, in 1945, the U.S. dropped two atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Some considered these an act of revenge. After all, President Harry S. Truman did mention the Japanese being, quote, repaid for Pearl Harbor in his speech announcing the use of the bomb on Hiroshima. The Japanese began the war from the air at Pearl Harbor. They have been repaid many folds. To be clear, most historians and experts agree that the decision to use the bombs was based on military tactics to expedite the conclusion of the war, given that Japan had refused to surrender. But given the hundreds of thousands killed, we can see why it feels more like revenge. Alexander the Great slaughtered the Tyrians. Alexander may be called the Great, but he could also be terrible and utterly ruthless when angered. The general sought to capture Tyre, located partially on a heavily fortified small island in the Mediterranean. His attempts to negotiate for the city's capture was rebuffed, and the men he sent were killed and thrown into the sea. Lacking access to ships, Alexander built a huge causeway to assault the city directly, with construction taking months. During that time, some of his soldiers were captured and executed atop the walls. By the time Alexander finally conquered the city, the deaths of his men had him so enraged, he ordered the deaths of 8,000 of the city's residents, selling another 30,000 into slavery. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Genghis Khan obliterated an empire. The Khwarazmian Empire was a Central Asian empire, mostly composed of present-day Iran and Afghanistan. The Khwarazmids managed to anger Genghis Khan after they executed a merchant caravan and later an ambassador. This prompted Genghis Khan to invade in 1219, breaking off another war in China. Over two years, the Great Khan managed to conquer the entire Khwarazmian Empire, one of the biggest land empires ever. It was one of history's bloodiest wars. Somewhere between 10 and 15 million people were killed. Not only that, the conquest essentially acted as a springboard for the Mongols to conquer further to the west. And it all happened because of revenge. 